Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, Ria. Hi. Wonderful to have Ria with us today. My name is Anshu, and I'm from the Wiki Karnataka Yoga Council. We are a state level council, and um, we represent the yoga sector of the Women's Chamber of Commerce and Industry. This is a voluntary council. We are basically a strong team of women from diverse fields and yoginis from different lineages and schools of yoga. And our objective is to make a difference to the various projects that are undertaken for yoga. And the basic pillars that we cover are advocacy, community, funding, and governance. My name is Anshu Vyas Sitaraman. You're welcome to this Facebook Live. And I have here with me Ria Deepak, who is a young yoga teacher. Ria did her undergrad from Christ College, which is Christ University, Bangalore. And uh, then she's gone into yoga and she did her yoga certification from India Yoga. And uh, let's talk to Ria first about, about her background and what she's doing currently. All right. Hi, Anshu. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, I would like to say my name again. I'm Ria Deepak and I am a, a born and brought up. I was born and brought up in Bangalore itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my schooling in Sophia High School and I did my college in Christ Junior College as well as my degree in Christ University. I did my bachelor's in arts uh, in economic psychology and sociology. Um, I graduated in 2016, right? Uh, I uh, had no idea that I wanted to get into some in the field of yoga at all at the time. Uh, I was still just, you know, search, uh, uh, exploring my options, just like, you know, uh, wondering uh, what to do next. I think everyone goes through that phase. No one's, uh, not everyone is too sure of what they want to do. Um, my parents, however, the, wanted me to do my master's uh, mm -hmm. and they wanted me to do an MBA. So I did uh, my GMAT training. I went for classes. I did all of that during my college days. And uh, I wanted to pursue uh, my MBA. However, before that, I wasn't too sure because, you know, doing your master's, you need to be completely sure of what you want to pursue. Right. So I wasn't sure. So I, uh, I told my parents, I was like, uh, why don't I get like, you know, a little work experience in before, you know, applying to colleges. And they were completely okay with that. And looking for job opportunities, I found one in Chennai in Zomato. So I got a placement. Oh, that's interesting. There. Yeah. So I got a placement there and I didn't want to get into sales. I wanted to do HR. Uh, but they told me that the only position opened is in sales. And if I do that for a while, uh, they can, you know, if I joined the job and I got the job, uh, go for the interview and I got the job, they said uh, in like down six months down the line, they probably see to shifting me into HR once there's an opening. So I, I thought that's a better option rather than me waiting, you know, to get a position in HR elsewhere and, you know, wasting my time. So I was like, okay, uh, this is also an opportunity. This is also a learning. So I took the job. Okay. I went for the interview. I got the job. Uh -huh. And uh, hence, I shifted to Chennai in 2017. Uh -huh. And uh, I was working uh, with Zomato for a year. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, to be honest, I loved it to begin with. Like the first six months, I had a ball because new people, new place, uh, new job, you know, so much learning, so much uh, something very different, something very new, something I've never done before. Uh, it threw me out of my uh, comfort zone completely because I had to do sales uh, in a language I had no idea how to speak. So uh, I was learning a new language as well as, you know, exploring a new city. So it was all very exciting for me. But I think after six months, it kind of got a, a, a little monotonous for me, you know, corporate life, doing the same thing from morning to evening, you know, every day, and then coming back, sitting behind your laptop for hours. You know, so uh, that was kind of getting to me. And uh, slowly, slowly, I started realizing that waking up in the morning and heading out for the job I do was not the most exciting thing to me. You know, I started dreading having to wake up. And, you know, so I used to probably call in late a couple of days just so that I could get some extra sleep in. And, you know, I was not enjoying it much. And 
in the course of my uh, Zomato journey, mm-hmm. I uh, one of my friends, a really good friend of mine, he told me he was uh, going to check out this yoga studio and he really knew I, I liked yoga. So he's like, I'm going to check it out. Uh, do you want to come with me? So I was like, okay, uh, why not? So I went and as soon as I stepped into the studio, so the studio is known as 136.1 uh, Yoga Wellness Academy. Oh, that's quite a well-known chain. Yes, yes, very well known. So it started in Dubai, if I'm not wrong. And uh, they have many branches uh, all over India. Okay. And uh, so I went in with him and I fell in love with the ambience, with the energy of the place, with all the props the, that were there. And, you know, people, I could see people through the glass doing their classes. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is heaven, you know? Mm. So uh, I was like, you know, I, I don't mind doing a child class. So I took a child class and I enjoyed it so much so that I decided after that one trial class that I wanted to like, you know, pay up for a month and do it. And after that, there was just no looking back. So my uh, yoga journey started via me having a job in Zomato. And uh, slowly, slowly from the corporate world, I kind of weaned off and got into uh, yoga full time. Okay. So I'll ask you uh, uh, how you got into, like how you decided to do the course. And, uh, but let me also just fill up about myself. Of course, of course, please. Yeah, so um, basically my journey was quite similar to yours, Ria. That's why I got very interested to talk to you. Um, I got into yoga when I was about five years old, where I found a book on yoga. And it was just in in a house that we had moved into. The previous occupants had left it behind. And I found it behind the bookshelf one day. And I started doing some yoga poses from that. I started copying and doing them. I found them very simple and some of them very challenging. And some of them have stayed with me all through. So that was my first exposure to yoga. And later, of course, uh, when I finished school and I went to college and started working in an ad agency and in advertising, the stress levels are pretty high, but I was coping really well. And I was also very ambitious. And I would always do yoga or any workout in the morning before going to work. And I could see that some of my colleagues were not so de-stressed as I was. So... While I was still in advertising, I joined the Muktananda Ashram, that is Gurudev Siddha Peet, as a devotee. And they give you a seva. And the seva that was assigned to me was a teaching seva. So I was part of this mandali where there were other people from other professionals, also an architect, me. And um, there was a yoga teacher as well. And we had to go and teach the Learn to Meditate 3-hour course or the 12-hour Shakti Path course, which is an intensive and I had to go and live in an ashram near Mumbai in Ganeshpuri for a month. And I got trained over there wow. and came back to Delhi and we used to go to different companies. And I remember once we went to a corporate, which was ONGC in Dehradun, and we set up a hall for them to come and meditate. And we had placemats for everybody to sit down. But uh, when the engineers came in, they looked inside the hall and they started laughing. They said, we cannot even sit on the floor. We've not sat on the floor since... 20 years. So that's when it first hit me that people need yoga more than they need meditation, at least some of them. So then all that went on and I was like busy with my work. And on the side, I have had these classes to do, which was voluntary. And later, when um, after I became a mother and I realized that um, there's a small baby to look after and also there were aged in-laws at home. So I figured that there was no way that I can go back to a nine to five job or a nine to nine job, which advertising is really. So I had to look within and take out something from within, like my hobby or some other interest, which I could do part time. I was very clear that I wanted to do something part time, which would keep me enriched and yet be able to give me time to devote to the child and the family. So that's how I took yoga out of the bag. And I decided to do, you know, go into it. And I started teaching one or two people and, um, then of course, you know, some, at some point, honesty hits you and you feel, oh my God, I'm doing this, but I don't, I, I love it. I know it, but I don't have the certification. So then I went into, yeah, some courses. I did a course in yoga. I was working with a trainer in uh, Bangalore. He's an Iyengar yoga trainer, Sri okay. HS Arun. So I worked with him in Jayanagar for many years and he was running a course and he invited me. So I, I got the first certification from him. And uh, then later I went on to do my Reebok certification in fitness and parallelly I was doing yoga and fitness I was teaching to corporates 
And wow. for many years, I, I've done that. Then I moved to gyms. Then I moved to yoga centers. And finally, I started teaching in a temple in Bangalore. And wow. now, for the last six years, I teach at the Sri Aurobindo Society in Bangalore. And mm-hmm. this is a, it's a spiritual lineage of Sri Aurobindo and Mother. They had that. The main center is in Pondicherry and at Orville. And I teach here in Bangalore for them. So now, that's amazing. So that's basically my little journey. Now, talking about you, Ria. So I'm very interested what prompted you to become a trainer. How, do, how was the transition, Ria, from having this corporate job and still going to yoga classes and loving it and still wanting to quit it all? That's like a big thing for you. You know, you were only, say, 23 or 24 by then. So yeah. how did that happen? I would um, like to know that. So uh, I always knew, uh, you know, I was not cut out for a corporate. Somehow, you know, I just internally felt that, you know, this is not something I'd enjoy. But uh, I was never like against giving it a chance. So I was like, okay, I did give it a chance. And Zomato being the most, I don't know if I could say the most chill corporate, you know, lifestyle that you could have because it's not too intense, you know, flex, uh, hours are flexible and the uh, employee uh, employees are also pretty young, you know, everyone starts off at, you know, only 20, 21 and it goes up to like 30, 35. So the whole group is pretty young and lively. So it's not a very serious environment to be in to begin with. So okay. uh, I think that's what even kept me there for, for a year, you know, just mm-hmm. being around young people and, you know, uh, having the same uh, wavelength, uh, everything yeah. was working out. But uh, like I said, I just did not like the monotony of it all. Mm-hmm. And, you know, having to do the same thing over and over again, uh, deal with, uh, you know, people, uh, the same kind of situations again and again, you know, on repeat, it was like a stuck record going on and on. And then uh, it became uh, quite competitive. I, I, I'm guessing you know that corporates yeah. get very, very competitive. Yeah. And uh, for me, it was not very healthy competition. It was ruining, you know, I could see uh, friendships getting uh, ruined. And, you know, I, it was just a very... Uh, not a very happy place to be in, uh, like mentally. Yeah. So um, my yoga classes, so I joined the yoga classes and I used to go every evening at around 4.30 was my class. And I would leave office a little earlier, obviously, to uh, attend my class. And that is the high, that used to be the highlight of my day, my yoga class. Because, you know, for me, uh, yoga is... Uh, is meditation. The practice of yoga itself, in itself, is my meditation. Like, I don't have to uh, sit in a place, you know, close my eyes, center myself. I don't have to do any of that. For me, one hour of practice, you know, asana practice, where it just consumes me completely. Like, I am so present in the moment. I am so, like, aware of everything I'm doing and I'm enjoying it so much so that, you know, I don't want it to end. As soon as the yoga class begins, I just want it to go on and on and on, you know? That's the kind of space, headspace I am in when I I do yoga. When you do yoga, okay. um, yeah, so it used to like be such a, a beautiful, like fresh of breath air in my day, you know, the classes I used to go to okay. and uh, just the energy of the That's people coming to do yoga. Everyone was so encouraging. If you get, if you learn something new or, you know, you do something new, which you haven't done yeah. before, they used to like, you know, come up to you and be like, wow, you know, you've improved so much, uh, yeah. you know, and that used to feel, it used to feel so good. And yeah. uh, of course, everyone used That's to totally just, relate to that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think uh, looking forward to doing that every day and that being the highlight of my day, uh, I just realized, you know, that and and fortunately, uh, my body really took to it like a fish in water. So, uh, you know, whatever was given to me, Mm -hmm. I didn't have to like, uh, it was not a struggle for me. It was just, it just, you know, it just flew, flow. How do I say it? It just, it just flew, flow through me, right? Like, uh, it was just... uh, you know, I just adapted to yoga so well that I loved it so much. So I was, I, it, it, it was something to think about, right? Because I was like, I'm enjoying doing this so much. Yeah. I should totally like venture out into seeing uh, what prospects I have in this, you know, if I have a future in this stream, rather than, you know, hating, waking up every day, doing something I really don't like and something that is not, you know, serving me uh, at all. 
uh, other than giving me a paycheck at the end of the month other than that it was not really making me happy mm -hmm. so uh, i was like maybe i can like you know look into these things so obviously i did my r and d's i did research on you know um, what all i could do in this field so i was like of course becoming a yoga instructor was the very first thing but everyone aspires to be a yoga instructor everyone can't be a good teacher you know you can learn well you do things well but it's very hard to um teach the same thing right yeah. so i was a little uh, skeptical about that mm -hmm. however I, i was like no you know maybe maybe if whatever i learn and i understand and i spoke to my mom about it and i was like you know i learned this today and the way i used to talk about it uh she really oh, understood your mom was also a teacher earlier right yes yes she was she did her uh, certification under the vivekananda school of yoga oh, okay. and uh, she was an instructor uh, earlier in the days so uh, a yeah. couple of years back yeah so she, she was an inspiration for you at home when you were growing up most definitely most definitely uh, she used to take uh, yoga for all the neighborhood kids i remember there were around 8 or 9 of us that used to go uh, uh, every friday saturday in the evenings you know we used to do yoga with my mom oh, and she used to make up these like uh, so uh, of course we were kids so we won't know the crux of yeah. yoga right so she used to form these stories around her teachings you know uh, when we used to do the tree pose uh, oh. she'd like form a little story and uh, make us believe that we were trees in a storm and how we have to hold our ground and be rooted and you know that's how i actually learned a, a lot oh. of my yoga okay. through uh, my mom so uh, so, sweet. so yes i did do yoga as a kid uh, i think i was around 7 or 8 when i actually began okay. began doing yoga yeah So like, so like what I was said about yoga being um like taking you to a meditative state and yes. um that's why they say that yoga is basically meditation in action. Yes. You know? So that's Yeah. All right. So now we'll move on and uh so uh, what about um, your career path? Like where do you see yourself um say a year from now or 5 years from now? uh i eventually uh, want to uh, be able to own my own studio right okay. that is the that is the aim mm -hmm. uh but right now in a year's time if you ask me what where i see myself in a year i see myself getting as much exposure as i possibly can as a teacher okay. uh so uh i really want to take this time so i i am 25 and i think now is the best time for me to travel around you know uh teach in various places learn different cultures or uh, seek what other people are looking for you know because uh everyone doesn't look for just one thing when they join yoga there are so many different things people are seeking for right mm -hmm. and i don't want to limit myself to just one group one in uh, like oh, what do you say one studio one city you know yeah. i want to travel around see what everyone uh is seeking for what everyone wants to learn what everyone is learning so yeah. i think uh instead of only just being a yoga instructor at this point i am also very much a student as well so yeah. my role is a 50 50 i am a instructor i do take classes i do teach and i enjoy that but i am still very much a student who is still yeah. seeking who is still learning and who is still growing so um oh. Yeah. In in a year's time I think I am still going to just continue on this journey of learning as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's nice to hear and uh you have a long journey ahead of you because you're only 25 and there's so much to learn and we we learn every day like I learn something new every single day. Like there's not a single day that goes by with me not learning something about yoga. So the research goes on and you should definitely explore different options as you've said and like make it more accessible to everyone so that in the, by doing that you'll be doing a great service to humanity uh there are a lot of people who need this so yeah so now um let me also just fill up uh, about um my career so over these last 20 years i would say that i have um, i was very lucky and i also worked hard and i got some great jobs which were one was with a leading gym chain in bangalore so i was their general manager and um, i had to look into sales and all kinds of things and growing the different branches so we launched a new flagship branch and uh, so my input there was to introduce yoga on the gym floor so we had yoga happening in the middle of the gym floor and people who were doing their workout with the 
strength training equipment would come and do stretches. So that was really nice. And we had a mini class happening. Some people would just come in for yoga. And in another branch of theirs, I set up a yoga floor, uh, which was a separate space for yoga. So that was also very successful. And I also worked with a leading international app. Um, I was heading the yoga division for three years. So I had that experience as well. And that's how my growth curve has gone because um, I got these corporate jobs in yoga. And then finally, um, I am now just teaching at, a, at an ashram. And uh, now because of the lockdown, everybody, you and me are both doing online classes. And that's so yeah. interesting. And we were discussing the other day on a chat. So now um, you were also mentioning about the professional courses you did. The one was at India Yoga and then uh, my, yes. yeah, Mysore. So do you want to tell us something about that? How, how was your experience when you actually went to do a, like a training as yes. different from a class that you attended in Chennai? Very different. How many hours was this training? And did you so, have to um, I did my certification for 250 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was uh, uh, over a course of one month and it was a residential program in Mysore. Oh, lovely. So I had to stay at the Shala uh, yeah. for a month and it was from Monday to Saturday and Sundays we got off. So that was four days off altogether. Oh, okay. Every Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, obviously, like I said, I had my life happening as it was in Chennai, but just that one hour was dedicated to my yoga, which I enjoy doing. And you know, it was so exciting to me that I was like, okay, this is, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And to become more serious at this, I should definitely do a certification. So after eight months of me uh, practicing yoga at the studio mm -hmm. was when I decided to actually, you know, take the step forward and quit my job and, uh, you know, uh, sign up for uh, this uh, certification. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I, I, uh, I did all my R&Ds looking at different schools, different institutions, yeah. you know, different places that do these certification courses. And yeah. uh, I uh, found the, that India Yoga was quite, uh, you know, well known and quite recommended by many people. And I knew uh, of a certain person who had, uh, you know, done her certification from the same place. Mm -hmm. So I had a word with her and she had only good things to say about it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, why not? You know, like, yeah, I've heard too many good reviews not to take this up. So I applied for it. And uh, this the minimum, uh, what do you say, qualification for it was you have to be doing six months of yoga continuously. And I had been doing eight. So I was like, okay, I mean, not eight, I had been doing 11. By the time I went for the course, I had been doing around 11, almost a year of yoga. So okay. I was like, okay, you know, so this is good. I I'll definitely be able to do this. Yeah. So once I got there, mm -hmm. I was, I was mind blown, uh, in a good way and, and, uh -huh. and in a bad way. <laughs> but, um, our day started at 5.30 in the morning. So we had to, we, our wake up call was at 4.30 and we had to get ready. Our, pla our practice started at 5.30 sharp in the morning and our days went on till 9.30 in the night. 9.30 in the night was lights off. Oh, so okay. we had something or the other happening. Either it was practice, yeah. uh, either it was, uh, you know, pranayamas or it was philosophy or anatomy or technical classes, you know, something or the other went on throughout the day. Okay. And I called my parents after the very first day, like before, you know, going to sleep, I called my parents and they were like, so how is it? How are you liking it? And I was like, I feel I've been here a week already. It's not even been a day. I haven't even gone to sleep yet. And I, I feel like I've been here already a week. You know, that day was so super long and there was so much packed into that one day. Mm -hmm. I haven't never been so productive in my life before. Okay. You know, I, I could say that. Mm -hmm. And it just took me by surprise. And, mm -hmm. you know, eating sattvic food, following a routine, waking up at the same time every day, sleeping at the same time every day, doing, you know, uh, things on time and, you know, very systematic. And I've never lived a lifestyle like that, to be honest. Yeah. Hours go by uh, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it took me by surprise because I was like, oh my God, this is, this is not something easy that I've signed up for. Like, it's definitely not easy. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was amazing because my interest in the subject was so much so that my interest and my curiosity and my love for yoga took me through it. You know, okay. uh, there were many people who um, did join the course, but found it extremely hard to get through because they were like, you know, at the end of it, I don't think I am going to pursue becoming a yoga teacher. I don't think, but, and you know, doing all this seems like such a 
toll on me and you know things like that so i i know quite a few people who did not enjoy it as much but uh it was it was just the most amazing experience for me and before leaving uh, all of us had tears in our eyes because none of us wanted to leave all of us wanted to stay another month you know do another extended course uh, yeah. but unfortunately that that wasn't the case mm-hmm. but uh, i'm definitely you know keen on going back as soon as the shala opens again after the covid situation allows uh, okay. i'll be definitely going back Uh, oh, to okay. do you know another level so. another level okay i'm also going to talk about uh, what you want to do later on that was very interesting about traveling the world i will come to that yeah. so let's also <laughs> go over any anecdotes that you have to share with everyone because uh, in this council we are about 20 one women and uh, there are a lot of yoginis as i said and some of them have given me questions to ask and we've been covering them slowly so i think one of the interesting questions is about any interesting anecdote that you have and uh, i will also relate mine while you think of uh, what you're going to say so i was talking about um, this yoga class that i used to attend with the uh, shri hs arun he is an anger yoga teacher in jayanagar bangalore so um i had signed up for the morning batch and um i soon found out that he had four batches in the day so i started going to any batch as per my convenience and i would attend so one fine day he was standing outside and he said uh, uh, which batch are you from i said sir i'm from the morning 615 batch or the 815 i don't know which one so he said oh but now it's not that time this is another time so i said yeah because i'm a trainer and i also have a child and i, I just want to come in whenever i can because flexi uh, so he said no you can't do that you have to stick to your time batch and you can only come then so you can't come whenever you want to to this class so i was like so taken aback and i was like rooted to the spot so he went in he took that class and i decided to wait for him and i was feeling so bad about this and i think his class was about an hour and 15 minutes and when he came out after all the students had left he came out and he saw me standing in that same place so he said oh you haven't gone as yet i said no i just wanted to talk to you and i explained my limitations and why i wanted a flexi timing and um i think that probably melted him and he agreed he said okay you can come whenever you want to and then when he offered a course i was one of the 12 people that he invited Wow. so i think it's these small anecdotes which make our yoga journey so beautiful i also have a yeah. lot of experiences with guru mai chidvilasananda who heads the siddha yoga lineage i'll talk about that on our next talk maybe i'll cover that uh, when we discuss next week but why don't you share an anecdote from or any story from your experience riya um i would like to talk about uh, so when i joined the studio like i said 136.1 right the yeah. first class i took was an ayangar yoga class so it had mm-hmm. a lot of prop yous okay. and me uh, learning yoga as a child has never done yoga with props so it was always you know using your body stretching it out getting into postures breathing in the postures yeah. but when i walked into that class uh, the first thing the teacher asked us to pick up pick up was a chair and i was like okay this is peculiar i mean i've never done yoga with a chair that's that's mm-hmm. weird so um she made us do all sorts of things with the chair she's made us do a chakrasana with the chair she's made us stretch the hamstrings she's made us bend over on do- in downward dog and i was like oh my god this is absolutely amazing use of a chair you know yeah. i just used to sit on but what is yeah. happening here, you know so uh, that's what really uh, you know sucked me in more than anything else just the the playfulness in the whole uh, you know a system of yoga like honestly speaking when i joined yoga i thought yoga was a little bit serious you know but just yeah. a lot of uh, it was just very uh, beautiful to me but i always uh, looked at it as a more serious art form you know okay. so um, once i went there uh, and i met my my guru uh, his name is mr saran yashwan so he's the one who's guided me through and through and he is still my uh, guru who still guides me through and through so i joined his class and he brought in so much play into yoga which made it so much fun you know use yeah. usage of hopes usage of straps usage of blocks mm-hmm. and he made it 
stand on them, you know, uh, test your balance, test your endurance, test your strength. And you're just like, oh my yeah. God, I did not know my body was capable of this. And day on day, he'd make you surprise yourself rather than him surprising you with the things he brought to the table. You'd be surprised that you could even do something like that. You know, your, your mind couldn't comprehend it, but your body did it. Yeah. So I was like, you know, things like that. So that's what yeah. I think, uh, you know, really stood out for me in my entire journey that I, I, I was allowed to bring so much yeah. play into the institution yeah. of yoga. Yeah. So there are a lot of young people who are joining uh, this talk and who have been listening. So we, we are getting a lot of questions and we're going to compile them all together. And the next session, when yeah. we do on the 21st of August, that's also Friday. So then we'll cover all the questions that people have been putting in there. Quite a few questions to you, Ria, today. And uh, now we let's also look at... Uh, what was the reaction of your family and um, social circle on your career choice? So that's a question. So um, maybe let me go on, go with that first. Yeah. Yeah. So then the thing was that uh, um, the reason I wanted to also become a trainer was that by the time my baby was six months old, I was really fit. Uh, um, and uh, Sorry, Andrew, can I just cut you there? I just wanted to know what uh, at what. I'm sorry if it's a rude yeah, question, sure, sure. but I just want to know at what age did you decide to take this as your career path? Oh, well, uh, I had, I, I was about 30 when I decided. Yeah. So, and, uh, so my baby was two years old by then. And, um, before that I was doing a class with just one or two friends and, uh, also the, my child's pediatrician and his wife, who was a doctor as well. And some people, we, they, would, they wanted to learn from me because I, I had suddenly become very fit. Of course, I was breastfeeding for the longest time, almost two years. So um, I had the small class on the terrace for people. And uh, then I wanted to, I was getting restless with it because I was missing my working days, my career. And um, I decided to approach corporates and I would... Uh, like through friends, I came to know about different HR people. And then I would either call them or go across to meet them. And if it required, I would even drive on my own. Like I remember once I went to Infantry Road, I parked my car and walked into four or five offices. And I asked to meet the HR in those days. Back in those days, it was much easier, of course, to first of all, to drive to different places and also to enter buildings. You didn't need an appointment you could just ask for the HR manager and you could go and meet them and speak about them wanting to start classes and more more or less I would get a yes so I also did Hindustan Levers, I am Bangalore, a whole lot of um, IT companies in Bangalore like Novell, Aditi, iFlex, Command International Software so there were a whole lot of companies that I did classes for and um, that was like a time when we could as i said travel in the evenings to different companies and take class now you can't even think about it with the traffic situation right. and uh, when my classes increased of course i hired a lot of trainers to work with me so at one point i had 15 trainers working for me so what i'm saying is that in about a year the business had grown to such an extent it had become a business of course from a hobby suddenly i realized i had a business to handle and i had so many trainers working for me but then i downsized because my kid was growing up and he was going into first grade by then so when he was six i decided to not do the evening classes and that's when i moved to the centers so the reaction of family was uh, initially they would ask everyone would ask me um what do you do so i said i teach yoga so, but what else do you do? Like, are you not planning to go back to your job is what everyone would ask. I said, no, this is it. Like, I, I like teaching fitness and yoga and that's what I'm going to stay with for some time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the, the choice is the, um, the choice of going and teaching in a gym was maybe not something that people in the family really liked um, and it was frowned upon and my timings were sometimes frowned upon because I had this early morning class and I started sacrificing sleep. So I would wake up at four, get ready, have a shower, go, go and leave the house by five, go and take a 5.30 to 6.30 class and still be back home before my kid woke up. So wow. yeah, so that was very surprising for some people. And um, also in the evening, you know, the classes similarly, I was going in the evening, but then I had at the end of the day, I can say that I had support from my 
child as well as the family. So it was all, all very good. That's so wonderful. And yeah, so you tell me, how was the reaction of your social circle and your family on your career choice? Um, I was a little skeptical, uh, to be mm -hmm. honest, to tell my parents that I wanted to quit my job because, you know, they were the ones who wanted me to do an MBA and because mm -hmm. of oh, yeah, that, MBA. I had asked them, asked them if I could do, get like, you know, some job experience first, so work experience first before going uh, ahead with my master's and they were like, yeah. So um, I was, uh, I just knew that, you know, that this is not for me and this is mm -hmm. where I'd like to go at. So yeah. uh, one day I reached office and before going up, uh, so I, I stayed, I hung around in the basement for like a few minutes, you know, contemplating, uh, okay, what should I do? You know, like, I really don't want to go up there. So uh, I really want to talk to my parents about this. But you know, you know, it's kind of just building that courage to tell them that, you know, this is, yeah. this is what where my head is at right now. Yeah. So um, I knew for a fact that my mom uh, would be very supportive. Like I said, she was a, a yoga instructor herself. Yeah. Um, so uh, I knew my mom would be very supportive, but I was not but too dad. sure of my dad. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I was like, okay, uh, instead of calling my mom, why not like completely jump into the fire and just call my dad? Yeah. So I picked up the phone without thinking twice. Cause you know, if I thought again and again, then I would talk myself out of it. So I didn't want to do that. So I immediately picked up my phone and I called my dad and he picked up. And as soon as I heard his voice, I broke down on the phone because I was so scared, you know, I was just like, oh my God, what's going to happen? So I broke down on the phone and he was like, uh, what happened? And I was like, uh, I'm not feeling too good. And he's like, there's no need to cry. You can just go to the doctor. And I'm like, no, that's not what I mean. I'm not feeling too good in my job. Uh, uh, this is not something I want to do. So he's like, okay, talk to me, like relax. There's no need to cry. So I was like, okay. So then I told him, you know, that this is definitely not something I like doing. Um, I want to get out there and I'm thinking of making yoga my profession. And he's like, okay, wow. Then why don't you put down your resignation papers and uh, look into what you can do in yoga? I was just like, wait, what am I like? Am I hallucinating? Am I really li listening to this right now? And he was so supportive from the very first second of me, you know, expressing my feelings about being a yoga instructor. So, oh, uh, I just, yeah, both my parents were very supportive and he's like, as long as it takes, you know, you don't have to worry. You don't have to rush into things. Take it as slow as possible. We'll, you know, learning yoga, doing your certifications, that is also an education. So, yeah. you know, if, if not an MBA, then yoga does the job you know you're still getting educated you're still you know learning you're still growing you're still you know making uh, something of yourself so whatever it is whatever makes you happy uh, we're very happy to support you so I think that's what uh, gave me the courage to actually put down my papers and you know take the risk because uh, of course going into it I wasn't sure how to like how to go about it or you know yeah. Even if I get a certification, how am I going to start teaching? How am I going to build uh, my own, uh, you know, net of students? Or uh, where am I going to teach? How am I going to get a job? There were so many questions, uh, you know, in my head. But just having your parents support you, I think, is such a, a, a huge yeah. uh, deal that it just yeah. gives you the courage to, you know, take that uh, unknown step forward and, you know, I just totally battle agree. through. Yeah. 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 My friends as well, my uh, social circle as well, they were so supportive and they were so uh, uh, pleasantly surprised by this step of mine. Because, you know, it's not very common that people take uh, the route of being a yoga instructor, right? And yeah. especially at 23. Yeah. So um, now there's a lot more awareness than it was way back then. Absolutely. And um, about different career choices and sports and fitness has really come up. Oh, yeah, so um, fitness has become a huge, uh, you know, aspect for people to like prospect, yeah. get into and, you know, yeah. work, work at. Yeah. So even my friends, very supportive, very encouraging. Uh, and, you know, like, suppose I'm doing something small, they're always, you know, ready to uh, advertise it a little for me, you know, put it out on their little groups and put it out on their Instagram pages, you know, just helping me out uh, a bit. And I think that's very comforting, very uh, encouraging. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I truly am blessed to be, you know, supported you are, by you are. You are so everyone. Blessed. Yeah, yeah. Great friends. Awesome. It's so, it's been so nice talking to Ria. So I also look forward to the talk on uh, next Friday, the 21st of August. Yeah. And um, just to share with everyone what we'll be covering on those days, uh, 
we'll be talking about the vision that each of us have for the future. And um, also, I'm keen to know what Ria wants to do for the community. So yes. since she's so young, I'm sure she had lots of things up her sleeve for the community. That's, that's going to be very interesting for us, for me and the council members to know. And Luwin Arangel, our president of the council, she'll be very keen to know that as well. And um, like, uh, what are your, how do you integrate yoga in your life and what are your life goals? That's another aspect that we'll be covering. And um, we've covered a whole lot of things about your childhood, about uh, and your, of course, the year that you decided to jump into yoga and what was the uh, perception then and what is the reality is something that we'd cover on the 21st. Okay. And um, also, whether you're making a decent living out of yoga, that's another. Yes, that is very important. Yeah. It's, discuss, a, it's yeah. a very sensitive subject. We'll be covering that as well. And uh, with this, I'm going to take leave. Um, and Ria and I are going to now decide to talk again uh, next Friday, the 21st at 5 p.m. again. So thank you all. Please, uh, please do log in on the Facebook Live next week again on the 21st at 5. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you also. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Bye bye. Bye. Lovely talking to you and looking forward to the next talk. Yes, most definitely. Thank you. Bye bye.